iFootage is the latest manufacturer to come up with a new line of bright LED lights. Curious to find out more? Let's take a closer look at what these fixtures have to offer. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from CineD and today I have the new Anglerfish LED light series from iFootage on my table. Yes, we all know iFootage for making high quality sliders and other camera rig accessories, but now they are entering the very saturated LED lights market. If in the past we saw a trend of manufacturing gimbals, as well as small audio solutions a la Rode Wireless Go or DJI Mic, we can now safely say that the next big thing is manufacturing lights. And judging by the number of emails we receive from LED light manufacturers, mainly from China, whom we mostly haven't heard of before, then it is safe to say that this is only the beginning and much more is about to come. So iFootage was kind enough to send us their four new lights, the SL1 60DN with 70 watts light output, the SL1 220DN with 220 watts light output, and the SL1 320DN with 320 watts power lights output. And what about the fourth one? Well, I'll keep it to the end. The lights arrived fully equipped with reflectors and different diffusing solutions from iFootage. For the sake of you guys having the complete picture, I'm filming myself with the Fujifilm X-H2S and the three new lights are all being used as key, kicker and backlight. So you can get the feeling of the light quality. As a documentary filmmaker, I tend to work with small and lightweight fixtures and out of the three, the new iFootage 60DN is the one that I would have chosen to mostly work with, simply because it's small and powerful enough for my documentary work. But before diving into talking about that specific light, let's talk briefly about what all of them have in common. All are daylight, dimmable, have Bluetooth connectivity and use the iFootage Lumen app for controlling the light functions. But maybe the most important thing is how iFootage decided to build the heart of their lights and I'm talking about the COB. As you might know, most if not all of those modern LED lights are based on having a single chip on board LED technology, meaning they have a higher LED packing density and improved lumen density. Simply put, stronger, brighter lights. Now, a company that is creating lights can choose between buying an off-the-shelf COB or designing their own, which is, of course, a more expensive and time and resources consuming task. iFootage decided to design their own COB and the main reason for doing so was to try and imitate the full daylight natural spectrum but without the blue spikes that are typically found in other lights of similar categories. There are two main reasons for iFootage to aim for better controlling the blue light channel. The first is to try and achieve more accurate, pleasing color rendering including nicer skin tones and not less important to reduce stress and eye fatigue which is an advantage when sitting in front of any of these lights for hours on end. Before continuing, I would like to stress that the lights we got are pre-production models and iFootage is doing its best to make sure that bugs are ironed out and everything is fine-tuned before starting delivery. Let's start by taking a closer look at the measurements and see if iFootage succeeded in controlling the blue light channel and in general checking the light quality and output of each light. And in case you are wondering, all measurements are taking one meter away from the COB bulb. So this is the 220DN. The blue light channel is wonderfully controlled, there is hardly a spike and to confirm this, Look at the R12 figure. This shows how well the blue color reproduces. Luminance is really good for this category at 8,778 lux. And as expected with a 60 degree reflector, we are at 43,941 lux output. CRI and TLCI are excellent with 98 and 98.5 ratings respectively. The daylight color temperature with the reflector attached is 5331 Kelvin. A tiny bit low, but still within the range of the daylight spectrum. 
For the 320DN, we measured the following. Again, the blue channel is nicely controlled, no real spike here, and the OUT12 measurement show nice blue color reproduction. Luminance is at 12,265 lux, and with the 60 degrees reflector attached, we are at 50,725 lux. Also with this light, CRI and TLCI are excellent with 98 and 98.8 ratings respectively. We measured the daylight color temperature with the reflector attached at 5,207 Kelvin, a tiny bit low, but still within the range of daylight spectrum. Now, let's talk about the 60DN. As I mentioned before, this is the kind of light that I would use for my run and gun documentary work. So I was especially curious to see the results. As you can see, the blue light channel is also nicely controlled with no spike at all. And the R12 figure shows a nice blue reproduction. Just for comparison, here are the measurements of the Godox ML60 that I've been using up until recently. You can easily see the blue channel spike and how the R12 shows inferior blue color reproduction. Luminance without the reflector stands at 2723 lux and with the 55 degree reflector attached we are at 10734 lux. CRI and TLCI are excellent with 98 and 99 ratings respectively. Daylight color temperature is a bit low in our testing as we measured 5121 Kelvin only. Both the 220DN and the 320DN have an external ballast. They look similar, but the connector to the light itself is different. Talking about the ballast, one should know it's relatively heavy and the rounded main dial is tough to operate. Sometimes two fingers are needed to turn the wheel. The power button has two functions. Long press will turn the lights completely off, while short press will bring the light to a standby mode, meaning the LED turns off, but the unit is still on. This mode is great for changing light attachments like softbox, dome, etc. Another short press on the power button and the light comes back, maintaining the last settings. The 60DN is more flexible to work with and just like other lights in its category, it has no ballast and the two knobs at the back are for controlling it. Talking about those knobs, I have to say that I find these buttons a bit flimsy to use and on top, not always precise. A good example is when navigating the menu. Often, you can find yourself turning the dial a few times in order to get to the desired settings. The 60DN is very small and at 760 grams might be one of the lightweights of its category. It comes with a pistol style hand grip which is nice for attaching the light to a stand or helping with handheld work. When it comes to powering the light, a V-mount battery can be attached to the hand grip itself and in case that you don't use a V-mount batteries, a suitable USB-C power bank can also be connected. One issue that I found when attaching the grip to a light stand, if the light stand has a tightening knob on top, the grip with the battery plate interferes with the knob and blocks it from rotating. When it comes to accessories, the 220DN and the 320DN are equipped with a standard Bowens mount, while the 60DN is smaller. Eye footage has a mini to standard Bowens adapter for this light, but it sits rather loosely. On the other hand, it has a little hole for mounting an umbrella. Florian, my colleague, who helped me with executing this review and I were both impressed with the quality of the accessories that iFootage created for this series of lights, especially the light domes. I know you are very curious to learn about the light fan noise and I have to say that it's very well controlled. It has no high pitch that is associated at times with fan noise. So it's very easy to remove in post-production in case you can spot it. 
The iFootage Lumin app is for iOS and Android phones. We tried it on an iPhone and it connected nicely to any of the lights. Usage is very straightforward. You can control the light strength, activate any of the eight lighting effects, and animate intensity when sound comes out of your phone. Remember the fourth light that I was mentioning before? Well, Anglerfish series also include a pocket light, the HL C4 RGBW. Where is it? This one. It has a magnetic removable diffuser and a magnetic back plate. The light is available in four colors. It can be operated via the onboard controls or via Bluetooth using the iFootage Lumin app which offers the same functionality and control, but doubles the number of special effects. Battery runtime is up to two hours, and this can be further extended using a USB-C power bank. For me, this is the throw in the bag light, one that can save the day in case of an emergency. Let's talk about pricing and availability. iFootage is taking pre-orders now on their website and will start dispatching the lights sometimes during September. When it comes to pricing, the 60DN will set you back $189, the 220DN for $429, the 320DN can be yours for $649, and the HL1 C4 RGBW can be purchased for $49. Conclusion. I have a lot of respect for iFootage jumping into cold water with a series of new lights. The prices are very competitive, the build quality is fine in most cases, and the quality of light is nice. The new fixtures are bright and in most cases accurate. If those lights do well in the market, I hope to see iFootage coming out with big color versions as those are a bit easier to work with when in the field, especially if you are a single operator. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.